So, you know, when you have to pee really urgently, but you have to keep it in because you can't go just yet, and then it starts hurting from urgency? Well, that was the reason why we had to make a mad dash through the city. Despite the circumstances, I did enjoy the ride. It gave me an opportunity to look at my city and my people. They all looked fantastic. Either way, at our destination, I skipped immediately and... This is Nidak, my adventure, written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 33, Urgent Relief. Horns, bells, music and shouting. Nidak woke from all the noise coming through the ajar window. She yawned, blinking. That had been a perfect sleep. Kitty mimicked her movements, yawning and blinking. There was no sign of Patat. She had trusted in him finding the way back. Her face scrunched up in worry. She looked through the window, but wherever the noise came from, it wasn't on her street. She squinted towards the alleyway across from the inn. When Melia threw open the door, Nedek jumped and cursed. Good morning, mistress. Oh, did I startle you? I apologize. I brought you your breakfast up because I assumed you wouldn't want to eat in the common room. Breakfast, you mean? And yes, you were right. No. No, mistress. Breakfast. During the coronation festivities, it is named that. Mistress, I left a shift out for you to wear during the night. Nedek had forgotten that she was naked. That's the way I always sleep, she muttered, and put the shift on to help against the draught while eating. Kitty jumped on her lap as she sat down. She asked Melia what she knew about the festivities. It wasn't much. While fetching the breakfast, she'd overheard that a parade would go through the whole city during the morning. It would stop around noon on the square market in front of the Triangle Gate. How far is the market square? The square market. Apologies, mistress. Not far at all. We are already in the square section of the city. Not f- Nedek, me here. Blackie's voice cut through what Melia was saying. Yeah, I hear you. You're right. Hungry, thirsty, release need, urgent. Balls. Hold on. Melia, how far? Not can hold. Now need release. Now! Somehow, Blackie managed to send a string of feelings towards Nedek to emphasize her meaning. Nedek's eyes opened wide with the urgency for a bathroom visit. Got it. Come in. Hurry! Mistress? What? No time to explain. We have to go to Blackie as quick as possible. Can you choose a dress which takes the least amount of time to put on? And then put it on me in even less time? It's urgent. It's very urgent. A surprisingly short time afterwards, they walked down the stairs. Nedak was relieved there had been a simpler dress. Although it still looked intricate enough, this design had less parts and instead of a skirt with many layers, it used a hoop made out of wood. While Melia had been tugging at Nedak's corset and took care of the other parts of the dress, Nedak fixed her hair. She couldn't do her regular hairstyle with the three French braids and not because that signified royalty. Instead, she let the bottom half flow free while arranging the top section in an intricate pattern of two braids crossing each other. 
that was a style accepted for the noble woman she was portraying. Crossing the common room was awkward, although she pretended to be oblivious to it. Conversations stopped, and although many patrons didn't look her straight on, many stared at her from the corners of their eyes. Lady White, the innkeeper began, I trust you enjoyed your night bath time and you had a wonderful sleep. Is there anything at all I can assist you with? Yes. If I can use a quin and your fastest strongman, I would appreciate it immensely. Of course, my lady, of course. Lazy horse is our best. I will urge him to get ready. Please have a seat. He, he will be here in twenty minutes. Lazy horse? doesn't sound very swift. In any case, twenty minutes is too long. I need it now. She twirled a coin in front of him. Yes, my lady. He snatched the coin out of the air when she tossed it. He claims his name is name of an animal, yellow with black dots. It's supposed to be one of the quickest animals. That's that's what he says, my lady. He ducked his head before walking off. Nidak watched him go while she said to Amelia, It's a good thing he's fat, or I wouldn't have trusted him. When Amelia looked confused, she added, Never trust a skinny innkeeper. It's a wisdom I learned from reading many books. Only a few minutes later, the quinn stopped in front of the door. Nedak and Melia rushed in, dignified, of course. Nedak opened the front curtain. The circle, as quick as possible. Don't worry about bumps. She tossed him a coin as well. Despite being strapped into the quin, he plucked it from the air with ease. Yes, ma'am. Better tighten yourself in. He nodded towards the sides and middle of the seat. Before Neda could knot the two ends of the ropes together, the quinn moved. The acceleration threw her back. Mila reached to shut the curtains, but Neda stopped her and opened up her side curtain as well. She wanted to see the city. She wanted to see her city. Streets and buildings rushed by. They hadn't lied about the man's speed. He shouted for people to get out of his way. They did. Melia squealed more than once when it was a close call. Neda couldn't stop laughing. The people, her people, looked gorgeous in their variety. This was obviously a richer area. The women's dresses shone luscious and the skirts were wide. The hairstyles had complicated braids, but never with all their hair. There wasn't a black piece of clothing in sight. Everything had color. The men's clothes were the best. They were tightly fitting breeches, which stopped at their knees. Below that, white fine tights with thin square pointed shoes. The upper parts of their outfits was even better. Nidak suspected it to be one of the many reasons she couldn't stop laughing. She tried to decide whether the large puffy sleeves were the funniest or the pieces of fabric in front of their manhood, many of them shaped as if the men were happy to see the women. At a precise moment, they drove through gates, one of the minor gates in the square wall. Blackie contacted Nadak again, in full-blown panic. Nadak tried her best to distract her, assuring her they were almost there. She didn't know if they were even close, but then Lazy Horse stopped his quin. Nidak all but jumped out, 
thanking him for his haste and hurried away. She was several steps further when she realized she didn't know where to go. The circle was a round, open space, surrounded by larger buildings. Amelia tugged at Nadek's sleeve, directing her towards one of the streets radiating out from the open, circle-shaped space. A moment later she opened up a door from the large building. Nadek felt as if Blackie could almost cry from happiness. It was an utterly strange picture to imagine for a dragon. Blackie whimpered as they entered. Nedak did not waste any time and immediately gathered the energy. They skipped. Before Nedak could take a breath, Blackie jumped up and spread her wings. She tilted to the side and tumbled in a headspin back to the ground. She used the momentum of getting out of the roll to run out towards the trees around the clearing. She wobbled and misstepped, hitting the first tree she came across. It shook. Several branches tumbled down, but Blackie was already disappearing from sight. Me see? Blackie's thought was riddled with panic. No, you're gone. Can't see you. There was no reply. Instead, a massive roar sounded from Blackie's direction. The relief it exuded was palpable. Nedak looked around the clearing as she chuckled. The clearing made by the presence of the piece of statue dropped there, ages ago. She clicked her tongue in annoyance for not yet reading all the pages left by her parents. Perhaps they had mentioned the statue. It would make sense, since her bloodline came from the originals, whom the full statue was supposed to depict. She walked over to a bundle laying on the ground and squatted down next to it. Whiny's bundle. Of course he left it. What was he to do with some handed down scruffy clothes? He probably had tons of fancy garments in his castle. My castle, Nedek thought, with a possessiveness which surprised her. It was eerie how fast she'd accepted her role as the princess and saviour of Earth. Both were interconnected. If she'd take up her right as a ruler, Earth should be safe. Easy as that. She snorted. Easy. Yeah. Taken up the responsibility of a queen and heir to some legendary couple. Blackie returned, landing in front of her. She said she found a good source of water and food. Nedak did not need to know the water was a popular drinking spot, which meant there was plenty of poo around. Blackie also said she wanted to have more grass to avoid getting hungry until tonight. Nedak sighed. It would be better for Blackie to stay here. Nedak wouldn't be able to hurry through the city every time Blackie needed a toilet break. Staying here would be better for the dragon. Nedak told her so. Blackie resisted, of course. She didn't want to be separated from Nedak, whose heart filled when Blackie said she wanted to be there in case Nedak needed protection. After some back and forth, Blackie gave in. She admitted it wasn't fun to be locked up in a dark building, and being out here would be better. Neither of them knew if their connection would work from such a distance. Neither of them knew how much of a distance it really was. Before skipping back to Hexaco, Nedak picked up Winnie's bundle. Perhaps she could fetch a few coins with the fancy fabric some of the clothes were made of. And if not? And if not? In the least, she might be able to hand it to people who needed it. As she picked it up, she felt something strange 
curiosity winning, she opened the bundle and gasped. There was wood inside. It was rectangular. After a little tinkering, Nedek figured out it could be folded open, forming into an open box. A memory of the time they'd spent walking, in between fleeing the cave and finding the statue, came back to her. They'd been talking about getting to a town or city, and how awkward it might be for Kitty. She'd explained about the litter boxes after he asked how it went when she lived in the tower. He'd meant her apartment. The conversation moved along from there. She turned the box around. Winnie had made a litter box for Kitty. She didn't understand why he'd done that, knowing he was only springing a trap. Why had he pretended to care? Back in the building, Melia didn't give Nadek any time to settle from skipping. Mistress, I met outside to listen to the street gossip because I knew I had time before you came back. And it's, oh, perhaps it's nothing, perhaps it's another creature. Nedek's heart skipped a beat. Mistress, they say Lord Pagewin has been gifted a magical creature who will help him predict his future. They will show it off at the coronation festivities official opening. The one at noon on the square market. Patat. It has to be Patat. The Gorak seemed to have gotten himself in some real good trouble. Nedak hoped showing him off didn't mean opening his guts. You have been listening to Nedak, chapter 33, Urgent Release. Narrated, adventured by and lived through by myself, Nadek, written in the better way than I can tell it by Astrid Chef. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Chef and at Nadek and Kitty. While fetching the breakfast, breakfast, well, well, that was a style accepted for the noble woman she was portraying. Portray, portray, portraying. Where was I? Oh my god, where was I? Yes, ma'am. Better tighten yourself in. Yes, ma'am. Better tighten yourself in. Yes, ma'am. Better tighten yourself in. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Better tighten yourself in. Nedak couldn't stop. Nedak couldn't stop. Need I couldn't stop laughing. God damn it. Waiting for a plane or something to pass. If it is not birds, it is planes. If it's not planes, it is cars. If it's not cars, motorcycles. If it's not motorcycles, it's awful. My cat. Fine tights with thin, square pointed shoes. Waffle is going to the bathroom. In case you didn't know already, the room I am in is actually his room. It just keeps on going. Ah, oh, Jesus. Are you ready? Holy shit. Wow. She used the momentum of getting out of the roll to run towards the trees around the tree. She, she used the momentum of getting out of the roll. What the fuck? She used the momentum of getting out of the roll to run out towards the trees around the tree. Why well, can't I do this? She used the momentum of getting out of the roll to run towards. <gasps> There must be something wrong with that sentence. Blackie's thought was really... Well, earth should be safe. Really? Should be safe? I can hear you, birds. I can hear you. She opened the bundle and gasped. Fuck. It was... Re it was... Re 
It was re it was rectangular. Waffle again, I see. He's on the toilet again. She's explained about litter boxes. Perhaps it isn't a coincidence that Waffle is <laughs> is using his litter box now. <laughs> While I'm talking about litter boxes. You done? Yeah, that's it. Bye. <laughs> Whatever, I don't know what I'm doing. 